Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be when the narcissist Hoover attempt fails. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So, a Hoover, what is that? That's when the narcissist is testing the temperature of you. They're seeing if you are open to communicating with them. They're seeing if you have healed they are seen if you have looked behind the mask. They're seen if you've identified who they are and if you're strong enough to maintain or to go no contact. Now the Hoover is a technique, a tactic. It's one part of the narcissistic abusive cycle that continues to go around in a loop. Remember, the cycle is like this. It's the love bomb slash euphoric stage when you first meet the narcissist or when they're trying to really butter you up. It's the devaluation stage after the narcissist has sunken their dirty fangs into you. It's the ending of the relationship, no matter how it ends, if you are discarded or if you ended it yourself, that's the ending of the relationship. And then a Hoover is when the narcissist is trying to repeat the cycle. That's what they want to do or to just test the temperature of you. But when the Hoover attempts of the narcissist usually were accepted by a person, perhaps it was you, that, that's when the narcissist is saying to themselves, wow, I really do matter. I really am important. This person, which turned out to be you, does care about me and they're giving me another opportunity. You see, what the narcissist was doing the whole relationship is they were manipulating you. They placed you in that devaluation stage. They kept you stuck in the trauma bond. They kept you pining for them or thinking about them or having you or having them live in your mind rent free. And this is what the narcissist does. It's what they're doing right now. It's what they did before they met you. It's what they'll be doing tomorrow and for the rest of their life on the planet because the narcissist is stuck in that low energetic vibrational state. I call it the quagmire state. It's lower than a piece of grass below your shoe. They wanted to keep you stuck in that low vibrational state with them. And what did they do? They entered a relationship with you, whether it was romantic, friendship, colleague, coworker, neighbor, person in community and or hobby group you were a part of. They glommed onto you. They figured out what made you tick. They learned all about you. And as soon as they had enough information about you, what did they do? Well, that's when they began to devalue you or that's when they began to instill the smear campaign and to drive wedges between you and anything and or anyone that mattered to you, which includes your time, money, energy, effort, love, empathy, your respect, your belief in humanity, etc. This is what the narcissist does. This is why they are shapeshifters. This is why they're dark energy forces. And this is why they only care about themselves. They don't care about one other person on the planet, not their own children, not their spouses, not their romantic partners, not their friends, colleagues, or anybody. But when the, when the hoover of the narcissist fails, this is when you finally have the message. You've finally gone no contact. You've blocked them, maybe even deleted them. You've removed them and all flying monkeys from your life and from your time frame, meaning your current status, wherever you are, and you have really slowed your life down. And now you understand that this narcissistic relationship, the one that you exited, this is the relationship that you need to heal from. This is the relationship that almost took you down for the count. This is the relationship that most people can't wrap their head around, but yet the narcissist can because they know who they are. They know what's missing inside of them. They know inside of their tiny little energetic vibrational state, there's nothing but emptiness, hollowness. There is anxiety. There is insecurity. They're riddled with insecurity. And they're always trying to have the loudest voice or to keep people stuck and to play on people's heartstrings or their emotions or have them give them another chance, which is what a Hoover essentially is. Until these people, which turned out to be you, you figure it out and you say, no, I can't go back for another round. I went back once, maybe twice, maybe three times, maybe more. But every time I go back, it gets worse and worse and worse. And I see the mask slip more and more and more. And this person is showing me how little they care about me every single time. And just when I would go no contact, this is what, this is probably what your path was in the past. My hope is it's not now, but either way, we're, we're getting you through this. We're helping you. Uh, but if you were playing the blocking and unblocking game with the narcissist, what you're doing there is you're showing them, whether you knew it or not, that you're not as strong as you think you are. This is what the narcissist is banking on. They have multiple people, multiple people stuck in the narcissistic fog at any one time. And don't think because perhaps your relationship, maybe it was a romantic relationship, don't think it was just you. The narcissist gets supply anyway, left, right, and center from anybody who will allow them access to them. 
and I'm not ex exclusively speaking to romance. I'm just saying that it doesn't matter if you're in a romantic relationship with a narcissist or not. They still were doing things behind your back and you never knew where they were when they weren't with you. And even when they were with you, you didn't know where they were because they were mentally checked out on one of the three smartphones, probably sitting right next to you on the couch when you were trying to spend time with them and they would be giving you the silent treatment or ignoring you or saying, yeah, just keep on playing the movie. It's fine, I'll catch up with you later. And you thought that was quality time, but it wasn't. What it was was you being devalued each and every day week after week, month after month, etc. But when the narcissist Hoover attempt fails, this will be a good thing for you. It will be a great thing for you. This is when you finally have gone no contact and you're not gonna give them another chance. You see, you can't unsee what you've seen. And what you've seen is a toxic narcissistic person. You've seen behaviors you never thought you would tolerate. You've experienced things you never thought you would experience. And you couldn't believe that perhaps this person was very successful in their professional life, maybe in the general public, but behind closed doors, they were basically an infant. They were a child. They were throwing things, smashing cabinets, crushing drawers, throwing things at doors. Many times people have to lock themselves in their own rooms or guest rooms to get away from the narcissist when they're trapped inside of their own house. That's for a whole different video, but you know what I'm talking about. If you went from romance to roommate, immediately you understand that that environment wasn't a safe environment for you. And the narcissist knew this. This is why the narcissist is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is why when you're living with them, it, you never know what you're gonna get when the front door opens. Is it gonna be Dr. Jekyll? Is it gonna be Mr. Hyde? You never know. That's why you're walking around on eggshells when you're in these relationships. This is why you become a shell of yourself. This is why you lose your identity to the narcissist. This is why you become an extension of the narcissist. This is why you stay stuck and trapped in the narcissistic fog. And this is why, for this video, why you do not accept a Hoover. This is why you decline a Hoover. A Hoover will never benefit you. And yes, you may say, well, I'm curious, Andrew. I wanna know what's going on and I wanna see if they really can change or if they are different or if the therapist they're seeing has improved their life, et cetera. Well, I'll just cut to the chase. The narcissist cannot change, they cannot improve. The only thing they can do is change the mask that they wear to manipulate you into going back to another round of punishment or another unsuspecting person to fall into their web of manipulation. But as the narcissist ages, they do become the aging narcissist, which is what? That's right, it's not a pretty sight to see. The narcissist, as they get older, they can't bat their eyelashes the way they used to. They don't have the physical features that they used to have. They can't bank on the charm as much as they could in the past. And more and more people are becoming in tune with who these people are. You see, years ago, no one really knew what narcissism was, specifically pre-smartphone and pre-interweb, because all you knew was you knew word of mouth. And most people stayed in their little town or city or area, and they didn't uh, no, they didn't go traveling as much and they didn't have access to information and they believed whatever the newspapers were telling them and they believed what the local news was telling them, etc. Fast forward, we're now in, in the year we're in and this year's rapidly approaching and ending. We're gonna start a new year pretty soon. And this is when people are now becoming awakened and aware, educated and empowered and they're understanding that not only are they the priority, that they come first, second and third, but that the narcissist has no business being in their life. You've given them way too many chances. You stayed in the relationship way too long. You finally, finally got the message and you blocked and you went no contact. And so what did the narcissist do? Perhaps, maybe they hoovered you. Well, maybe, how did they hoover you? Maybe, let's say for this example, they sent you a couple emails or an email saying that they miss you or that you left an old smelly sock from 30 years ago in their house or that they need to get that screwdriver from your house that they left 15 years ago or whatever they're saying, any excuse to communicate with you. You see, what the narcissist wants to do is they wanna keep as many communication avenues open as possible. And this is where, where they thrive because if the communication avenues are open, they could call you, contact you, text you, email you, do whatever, that would drop a package at your door. They could send you something in snail mail. They could send in a flying monkey. They could do whatever they want to do to disrupt your energy. And your energy is priceless. Your time is invaluable. And all of your resources are meant for you, not for a parasite to take from you. But that's what the narcissist is. They're a parasitical creature who is looking for a host. They're looking for the unpaid helper. They're looking for the walking apology. They're looking for the sounding board. They're looking for someone to pay their way through life. They're looking for someone to regulate them because the narcissist, as I mentioned earlier, they're an infant, they're a toddler, they're a child, and they want to appear that they are always in control and they know what's going on. They don't know much at all. The one thing the narcissist does know is they know how to manipulate people. They know how to people, they know how to get people to fall in love with them and they know how to, to guilt people and blame people and play the victim card. 
And as soon as these people go back into the narcissistic relationship, that's when they have to pay a heavier price for opening the door again. Because as I mentioned previously, if the, if the narcissist knows that the door is open even a crack, they will try to kick it wide open. And when they kick it wide open, there's gonna be a big price to pay by you for keeping it open. That's why I suggest virtually in every video I create, go no contact, block them, delete them, etc. But when the Hoover is rejected or when the Hoover fails, this will create a narcissistic injury to the narcissist. Now, again, I'm not a big proponent of injuring anybody, but I'm using a term that is prevalent in the community, which is the narcissist gets injured because they didn't get their way. So when that happens, that is advantage you and it is disadvantage narcissist and that's what we want not to necessarily inflict damage upon a person because that's not what we wanna do. We just wanna protect you and insulate you and have you become the best version of yourself possible. And if going no contact is the path, that's what I would do. That's what I strongly suggest in every video. But rejecting the Hoover and having the Hoover be a failed attempt, that is when the narcissist is at a weak point in their life because you are not accepting a bite of the forbidden fruit any longer. You are not opening up the emails or you're not open to communicating with the narcissist. You're maintaining no contact. You're deleting that email as the example uh, mentioned. Why would you do that? Because you don't need to know where the narcissist is, what they're thinking, what they're doing, who they're with, who they're not with, or you don't, above all, you don't wanna be giving them chances. You've already given them way more chances than they, they deserve. You've given them more chances than probably you've given most people. Because again, you were stuck in that devaluation stage and you were doing what they wanted you to do and they broke you down and played on your heartstrings. And if you accepted a Hoover, you know what I'm talking about. This is why you don't accept the Hoover. And so when the narcissist Hoover officially fails, it will be great for you because you can look back and you can say, yeah, that, I used to accept that in the past. I used to believe in their words. I used to believe in, the, in what they would tell me, but I no longer do that. And the reason I don't do that is because now I've become educated and empowered. And I realize that all their words are just false. They're just mumbo jumbo. It's just rhetoric. It's trying to keep me stuck. And it's trying to help. It's trying to keep me oversharing my information, explaining myself, defending myself, and thinking that maybe we could go back in the relationship for another round. Well, this is not the path. The path is to finally take the lifelong learning lessons from that relationship and apply them in present day and not predict the future and understand that right now, wherever you are, if it's where you want to be, that's a great thing. If where you are is not where you want to be, well, there's work to be done. But to get to where you want to be, if you're not where you want to be, you're gonna to have to go no contact and you're gonna to have to stop giving the narcissist chances. And above all, you're gonna to have to not accept a Hoover, no matter what form it comes in. The narcissist can claim that their health took a hit and they need you to give them a ride to the hospital or whatever, or they can claim that they have all this money that they're gonna give you, but just if you'll open up communication with me, or they can claim that their children or somebody wants to talk to you, etc. The narcissist can say any song and dance they want to. We now see behind the mask. We now understand what these people do and what they're made of. We now know that there's no core to them. There's no substance to them. All they wanna do is keep people stuck and trapped in the narcissistic fog where they exist. And they had you, they captured you for a period of time, which was the length of that relationship, but now you're out. And this is where, why you're healing or you've healed. And this is where you are headed towards or have arrived at the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference where you no longer care about the narcissist or anybody from that period of time. You see, the Hoover is a feeble, weak attempt, if you really look at it, by the narcissist. Think about the ending of the relationship. Let's say you were discarded. First of all, if you were discarded, my heart goes out to you, but think about the person you saw when you were discarded. Think about how they looked at you, what they said to you, what they did, or what they didn't say, or didn't do, or what they left behind, etc. They meant to inflict as much damage upon you as possible. And again, that did hurt you, it broke you, it challenged you, but you figured out what narcissism was. That's why you're in the community and you're getting the wisdom, you're getting your cup full with the videos I create every day. And that's a good thing. You see, the narcissist never thought you would put yourself back together. They didn't think you would dust yourself off, pick yourself up by the bootstraps and rise through the ashes like a phoenix. They didn't ever think you would reach the pinnacle of indifference. They thought you would be stuck thinking about them and be hooverable. Well, you're not because now you get the message. You understand that your energy is invaluable and that the narcissist deserves to be nowhere near you. They shouldn't know what your hair color is, who you're dating what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, who you're spending time with, who you're not, what your job is, etc. The narcissist had the best thing they will ever have in you, and they know it. And this is why they try to hoover at times, because they're missing the best thing they ever had, and they're trying to keep that person, which was you, still stuck in that loop. This is why the hoover is a absolutely feeble attempt from a coward and a bully, i.e. the narcissist, to draw people back into the relationship or to get things from them. 
Maybe it's your adult child, like I mentioned a couple days ago in a video. Maybe your adult child is the narcissist and they keep on trying to contact you through burner phones or emails saying that they need their mortgage paid or they need their cell phone bill paid, etc. Well, that's a Hoover. And what they're doing is they're trying to play on your heartstrings so you are feeling guilty because you probably do have financial resources and you can pay for their bill because you've been doing it for their whole life. But you finally said no and you blocked them and said, sorry, figure it out yourself. I'm not going to be your ATM machine and have you verbally abuse me when I give you money or send you money every month. But see that this is what the narcissist does. They're always banking on your heartstrings. They're always playing on your heartstrings. They're playing on your emotions. They're playing on your empathy. They're playing on your love and your respect and your common decency. All those things are things the narcissist doesn't have. So if you have things that the narcissist doesn't have and you do, they want to not only take them from you, but they want you to not exist. They don't want the light to ever shine. They don't want you to reach the pinnacle. They don't want your beautiful, bright, shining light to elevate and to ascend higher than the sun, the moon, and the stars. They want to keep people trapped and stuck in that low vibrational quagmire state where they exist. That is where they thrive. So do not accept a Hoover. It will never benefit you. And when the narcissist Hoover fails, they will take a hit. They will say, wow, I really don't mean anything to this person any longer. They finally did wise up. They did figure it out. Wow, I need to go somewhere else. I have to start all over. Let me go look in the Rolodex. Let me go look in my phone book and see what I can recycle. Or let me go on social media and start stalking other people I haven't even met yet and try and blow up their lives. This is what the narcissist does. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. And I will talk to you tomorrow. And yes, I have a haircut. It's a little shorter. I hope you like it. I like it. It's a lot lighter and fresher, etc. Uh, before I close the video, I want to let you know, if you were hoovered, you know what I'm talking about. Drop comments below, help people out. If you are being hoovered, don't accept it. It will never help you out. And if you get hoovered in the future, maybe it comes out of left field after 10, 20, 30 years, don't accept it. It's just the narcissist trying to stay stuck in your mind and trying to keep you trapped. Do not ever, ever, and I mean ever, ever, accept a hoover. I love you all. God bless you. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.